On the 24th of February 2022, Russia launched an invasion of Ukraine which has carried on for months at the point of writing this script. There have been too many developments to count with Russia making gains, Ukraine pushing back and NATO in a frenzy. More recently, the subject of nuclear war has been brought up, with Putin threatening the West with nuclear annihilation should the war in Ukraine escalate to the point of direct NATO involvement. This, for many people, has dredged up unpleasant memories of the Cold War that raged on from the end of World War II up to the dissolution of the USSR in 1991. Many have wanted to discard that period of history and continue improving relations with one another. Being a history student myself, I can understand why. The Cold War was a period of human history marred by paranoia, fear and the looming threat of escalation. It's this history and recent events in Ukraine that led me to discover a 1984 TV film named Threads. To say this film shocked me to my core would be an understatement. This is one of the few films that perfectly encapsulates that fear of nuclear war, thought long buried in the annals of human history. That intense fear behind the what if question. What if the Cold War turned hot? What if nuclear war were to break out today? With Putin's recent threats of nuclear war, and NATO at the ready should such an attack come, I think it's crucial now more than ever to take ourselves back and immerse ourselves in that fear that gripped our parents' and grandparents' generation. So let's have ourselves a little history lesson and go back. year is 1984. Classics such as The Terminator and Ghostbusters hit the scene. Prince, Van Halen, Phil Collins and many more are topping the pops and the world stage is more unpredictable than ever. Miners strike against the Thatcher administration in the UK as 20,000 jobs are predicted to be lost. The crack epidemic is on the rise, which Ronald Reagan definitely didn't know anything about and Konstantin Chernenko succeeds Yuri Andropov as General Secretary of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union. Life was good in the 80s, as I'm sure many of you have no doubt heard from your parents and grandparents. However, that threat was still looming over everyone's head. That icy cold one. The 80s were the last true decade of the Cold War. Though there was a significant fallout during the 90s as a result of the Cold War, with the dissolution of the USSR in 1991, it seemed a definitive end to the period. Come the mid to late 80s as Mikhail Gorbachev came to power in the USSR and international relations strengthened between East and West, that threat of the Cold War turning very hot dimmed. Before long, people were laughing about the whole ordeal and the fear of nuclear Armageddon became a distant and bad memory. However, from the end of the Second World War to the early 80s, people really were terrified of what might come of it, and it was this fear that acted as the inspiration for 1984's Threads, a straight-to-TV film set in Sheffield, England during the outbreak of a nuclear war. And of all films and documentaries I've watched around this subject, None of them have come close to the fear and panic I get from watching Threads. Before we get into the film, it does help to have a bit of context. On the 6th and 9th of August 1945, American bombers dropped Fat Boy and Little Man over Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan, effectively ending the Second World War. It sent shockwaves through the world, and the work of the Manhattan Project on those two bombs would send the world and its leaders into a frenzy, developing nuclear weapons, spying on one another to acquire secrets, 
and threatening one another with these weapons. The bombings of two Japanese cities would go down as one of the darkest events in human history as it kick-started what's widely referred to as the nuclear arms race. This arms race has only worsened as time has gone on. 1952 saw the world's first hydrogen bomb developed. By 1959, the Soviets had tested the R-7, the world's first intercontinental ballistic missile, or ICBM for short. And 1962 was the closest we ever came to annihilating ourselves. The Cuban Missile Crisis, in my opinion, is the most important event in human history for two main reasons. One, it's the closest we've ever come as a species to facing our own mortality. And two, it showed the pettiness of our leaders in all capacities and why men like that can't be trusted to make decisions of that gravity. To give you an idea, Three captains aboard a Russian nuclear submarine thought war had broken out already. Captain Valentin Savitsky and political officer Ivan Semenovich were fully prepared to launch the submarine's nuclear torpedoes, which if fired would release the equivalent of 10 kilotons of TNT, two thirds the force released by the bombs dropped on Japan. Thankfully, second captain Vasily Alexandrovich Arkhipov wouldn't authorise the launch, and all officers must agree for the launch to go ahead. Had Vasily authorised the launch, I wouldn't even be here making this video, and you wouldn't be watching it. It's scary to think just how close we came to annihilating ourselves. Scarier still, there's a chance it could happen even today. And I guarantee you, the power of a nuclear weapon today shits all over whatever was floating around in the 60s. Recently, President Vladimir Putin threatened the West with the RS-28 Sarmat, or the Satan II ICBM. It is said to be the biggest ballistic missile in human history, capable of hitting a target 11,200 miles away. Even after the strategic arms limitation talks, that being SALT-1 and SALT-2, Leaders the world round still can't stop measuring each other's penises to see who has the biggest, baddest ICBMs. It's a little sick, all things considered, and it's this attitude that drove Barry Hines to write the screenplay for Threads in 1984. And it's here I'd like to now focus on the film Threads, and the concept of the nuclear winter. Instead of me explaining it to you, I'd instead like to hand this over to John Tusa, who introduced the film to the British public in 1984. Good evening. In the 40 years of the nuclear age, we've grown accustomed to its vocabulary and even somewhat hardened to its ideas. Fallout, radiation sickness, zones of destruction, megatons, even mega deaths. The phrases have become part of everyday speech. Recently, a new one has been added that has introduced a fresh sense of urgency into the nuclear debate, the nuclear winter. That's to say, the belief of some scientists on both sides of the East-West divide that a large-scale nuclear exchange would not only wreak the vast destruction and death that we all think we know about, but would throw so much dust and smoke into the atmosphere that the planet's climate would be drastically altered. The sub-zero temperatures of a nuclear winter would threaten the survival of the survivors. This thesis is the subject of several high-level inquiries, even one backed by President Reagan himself. The onus, as one authority put it, is for those who doubt the nuclear winter now to disprove it. Tomorrow night, in a documentary called On the Eighth Day, you can see the scientific evidence that lies behind the nuclear winter hypothesis. That will be followed by a special Newsnight debate, which I'll be chairing, on the strategic and defence implications of the new evidence. But we start tonight with the advent of a nuclear war itself. What would happen if Britain came under a nuclear attack? How would ordinary people survive the impact of the blast and the conditions that scientists say would result from a nuclear exchange? Threads is a drama. The characters and events are fictional, and it deals with something that has never happened. 
but it draws on a vast amount of scientific information amassed over the last 40 years on the likely effect and destructive power of nuclear war. Some of the scenes which follow may distress you. Threads was made in and with the cooperation of the people of Sheffield. Threads begins with our two main characters, Jimmy and Ruth, a couple who are planning to marry in the wake of Ruth's unplanned pregnancy. Ruth and Jimmy sit in a car together, looking out over the English countryside, bantering away and discussing what their plans are now that Ruth is expecting. The opening moments of the film are very mundane, as we see Ruth and Jimmy's family lives, the lives of everyday Sheffielders, and a number of news segments that elaborate on the political backdrop of the film itself. Iran has recently been invaded by the Soviet Union, in retaliation for a US-backed coup. America sees this as an act of aggression, and proceeds to move troops into the country, with the Soviet Union promptly responding to this act, by moving nuclear warheads into Iran. One thing Threads does particularly well is immersing you in the lives of everyday people, from working men like Jimmy to politicians like Mr. Sutton. Better yet, the film does a stellar job at showing you how apathetic some of these people can be. The situation in Iran is dire, and even as nuclear warheads are moved into the country, barely anyone seems phased by it. Though I do think what Jimmy's friend Bob says here does hold some weight. Oh, that dragon is getting serious. Well, it's not weakened, about it, is there? Might as well enjoy ourselves as we can. I know, but don't it scare you what it might lead to? Well, it bloody scares me. There's no weakened, though, about it, is there? I'll tell you one thing, if the bomb does drop, I want to be pissed out of my mind and straight underneath it when it happens. In the end, insecure politicians are going to throw their weight around to show everyone how big and strong they are. And ultimately, people like Jimmy and Bob can do nothing but watch on and throw their hands up. As the story progresses, the sheer dread of it all only begins to rise and rise. While watching the film, I genuinely had an awful feeling in the pit of my stomach. You know it's coming, but you still hold that ounce of hope that things will level out and we'll all come out on top. Anti-war and anti-nuke protests have now grown in scale, as people the world over can feel doomsday rapidly approaching. Before long, many of these protests begin to turn into riots, with people clawing, punching and kicking each other with the sheer frustration of it all. Not to mention the police aren't much help either, as they violently thrash protesters and apprehend them. Many begin to pack their bags and leave for the countryside, hoping to wait things out. This is yet another striking moment in the film, as it demonstrates how many people just don't understand the repercussions of an intercontinental nuclear exchange. It isn't the blitz of the Second World War, you can't just bugger off to the countryside and wait for things to blow over. A nuclear strike, let alone multiple nuclear strikes, will absolutely devastate a country for years to come. A worldwide nuclear war would leave the planet in a state of absolute desolation for decades. There have been many studies done on nuclear war over the years, and this idea that you could minimise the effect of the bomb or the ensuing radiation is a very thin veil of safety. There are no safety nets when the bombs drop because they've all been incinerated. This is a point we'll return to shortly, as I want to drive home just how serious a threat nuclear war is to life as we know it, and how it will come to be known in the future. It is soon reported that US bombers have begun assaulting a Soviet military base in Iran. The Soviets respond with nuclear-tipped air defence missiles. Almost all the B-52 bombers are lost. America follows this attack up with a nuclear strike on the Soviet base. The exchange stops. The world as a whole has now reached its breaking point, as countries the world round brace for nuclear war. It is here that the sheer dread of the entire ordeal hits you hardest. As Ruth cries into Jimmy's arms, fearful for the life she had planned to share with Jimmy and their unborn child. 
We see Jimmy's family preparing to weather the nuclear blast. As Jimmy's father begins to craft a makeshift shelter out of mattresses, doors, tables, books, etc. Ultimately pointless, but this is one of the many carefully constructed lies put forward by governments the world over. Nuclear war is a terrifying prospect. No one person wants to be vaporised by a nuclear blast. Thus, governments saw a clever opportunity to relieve tension and assure the people they could survive a nuclear blast by following a few simple steps. Duck and cover, create makeshift shelters, find an enclosed space in the centre of your home. All useless information that will do, in my own words, sweet fuck all against a nuclear blast. However, it worked. Schools, televisions and leaflets across the world promoted these absolute lies to show how caring and trustworthy their governments were. That even if a nuclear blast were to hit us, we will surely survive and recover. If you are within reach of a nuclear blast, you are going to die. There's no two ways about it. Whether you're vaporised by the initial blast or die in a pile of your own vomit and shit as you succumb to radiation sickness, chances are you are going to die from a nuclear blast. This is the unnerving and painful truth of nuclear war. And unlike leaders and city officials across the planet, I don't have to save face. If nuclear war breaks out, chances are you will die. And that is a point that Thread drives home perfectly. Once the bombs finally hit. This is what nuclear war looks like. Screaming, panic and death. Threads is an unapologetic look at the horrors of the bomb. The devastation it causes to both infrastructure 
and people alike. Homes reduced to ash, people incinerated, nothing but death. As the dust settles, we see the aftermath of the nuclear exchange on those we've come to know over the film's runtime. Jimmy's mother and father managed to weather the nuclear blast, however Jimmy's mother was horrifically burned in the chaos and can't even bear to be touched due to the pain of the burns. Ruth, on the other hand, was much more fortunate as her parents managed to barricade themselves in the basement of their home. However, it's clear that Ruth is completely emotionally detached from her parents and her given situation. All she can do is rock back and forth, crying and wishing she and the baby were dead. With no sign of Jimmy, she doesn't see the point in continuing on. Speaking of which, an interesting point about Threads is that this frame here of Jimmy running through the streets is the very last we see of him. That's it, it's completely unceremonious for a character we assume to be our protagonist the whole way through. It's such a clever touch, showing that everything we've become attached to can be taken away so easily by the drop of a bomb. Jimmy's dad leaves the house in search of water, as the bombs have completely destroyed the supply of fresh water from the taps. He searches far and wide, and gradually begins to lose his sanity. The next we see of him, he's part of a mob, shaking a fence and hurling verbal abuse at the military police protecting a stockpile of food and water. The desperation is beginning to set in on both ends. Civilians need food and water, however the military don't have enough to go around, thus a system of rationing has been established. Any form of sanitary and stable healthcare is gone. This next scene is particularly gruelling, as we see all these sick and dying people shuffle into the ruins of a hospital. Blood, pus, vomit, screaming, crying, the hospital is soon caked in every bodily fluid and ugly human emotion possible. Even the nurses are breaking down, and who can blame them? Not only are they overwhelmed, but the scenes on display are horrific. As the scene shifts, we see the military police patrolling the streets, shooting looters, gathering supplies, and trying to restore order to a world that's far beyond it. The film really is just one downward spiral from the first news broadcast. Jimmy's father is once again the focus of the next scene, drinking himself into a coma and vomiting up what he can't keep down, clearly trying to drown his sorrows. But that eerie feeling of nostalgia sets in when he starts playing his dead son's handheld game and cries himself to sleep. Before long, there's no fuel left to cremate bodies as they begin to stack up and stink city streets. The situation is becoming dire as the military are now becoming more and more authoritarian just to cope with the pressure of the ordeal locking them up and executing them without trial, for crimes such as petty thievery. The story now begins to follow Ruth. Having left her parents to seek some kind of salvation, she finds herself scrounging around in the dirt, living off scraps and going house to house trying to ensure her safety and the safety of her child. She soon comes across Bob, Jimmy's friend, as they travel around the countryside looking for any kind of shelter or food to help them get by. As time goes on, Ruth and Bob become separated, leaving Ruth no choice but to fend for herself again. Not long after their separation, Ruth ends up in a farmhouse going into labour. Thankfully, the baby comes out fine and a good number of years pass us by. The film makes it very clear what side effects exposure to radiation can have on a child, with deformities and mental retardation being the most common. This is very evident during our last scene with Ruth, as she can barely muster up the strength to leave her bed. All her daughter can say is, work and up. Ruth dies in her bed. 
In the decade or so that has passed since Ruth gave birth to her daughter, the world has recovered, but not by much. People are still being worked to death, and the population is standing around 4 to 11 million, a number that hasn't been seen since the medieval period. Ruth and her daughter were just a few of the many workers across England trying to rebuild civilization. The nukes acted as one big restart button, and now people are regressing to an almost Neolithic mindset of work, eat, sleep and mate. No enjoyment in life. Music, walks in the park. It's all been stripped from us. Ruth's daughter experiences this firsthand as she works herself to the bone and scavenges for food. During a meal, she's attacked by a boy looking to steal her food. However, this attack gradually takes a turn for the worst, as Ruth's daughter is raped. Flash forward, and she, much like her mother, is stumbling around the ruins of post-apocalyptic Britain carrying a child. Unfortunately, she's not only extremely young, but riddled with radiation. And as the baby is handed to her when she gives birth, she screams. The baby is dead. Over the years, we've seen many films depict nuclear war. Some of them more light-hearted and adventurous, like the Mad Max films, and some more harrowing, like The Day After. In fact, speaking of The Day After, the film actually came out before Threads, and in a way, they're quite similar. But why is it that I prefer a film like Threads over The Day After? To tell the truth, I'm not really too sure why, but I think it mainly comes down to the atmosphere that Threads puts at the forefront. That and the scenes of nuclear destruction immerse me a lot more, because in the day after, you see all these people being vaporised, but in my opinion, it almost looks like a cartoon. Threads, on the other hand, isn't afraid to show you the ugly truth of nuclear war. You see people buried under debris, people literally piss themselves with fear at the sight of the bombs. I just find it a much more gruelling experience to sit through. More importantly, why is a film like Threads so important? Threads is important because there are no theatrics. This isn't a film you can sit down and enjoy with a bowl of popcorn. This isn't a film you can laugh over with your friends. Threads is the type of film that is intended to frighten and upset you. Far too often, we see a very cookie-cutter, flowery depiction of the nuclear apocalypse. Look at games like the Fallout series, or films like the aforementioned Mad Max. Though I'm a huge fan of games and films like these, they play up nuclear Armageddon for the sake of action and humour. Threads is a film that will kick your teeth in and piss in your mouth. It's the kind of film that tells you to your face, in the event of a nuclear strike, your family, friends, your home, everything you know and love will be taken away from you. Given what's going on with current affairs and the history of the Cold War as a whole, it's important now more than ever to look at films like Threads and really analyse what awaits us if we push that big red button. That is why Threads is important. The fear of the bomb that was sown during the Cold War period isn't a distant or bad memory. It's just as likely that we'll nuke each other now as it was back then. Look, don't get me wrong. I'm not naive enough to believe that we'll all disarm our nukes and live in peace and harmony, because, in my opinion, that's a completely unachievable goal. I know nukes are going to be around. I know they're going to be used as a deterrent. I know that we're going to piss away millions, billions, trillions of euros and dollars, whatever else on nuclear weapons and mercenaries, to kill, rape and maim each other for hundreds of thousands of years to come. I know we're going to treat each other like shit. It's human nature, it's been happening for centuries. But at the very least, films like Threads can remind us of the consequences of those actions.
So it's been a while. <laughs> Hi, hello, how are you? How are you getting on? How are you keeping? Um, yeah, it's me. Um, <laughs> it's been a while. Um, so you've probably all been wondering uh, where I've been. You've probably been saying to yourself, Hey Emmett, you stupid fucking retard. Where have you been? Why haven't you been making videos for us? And the short and sweet of it, um, life has gotten in the way. There's been a lot of shit going on and I'm very, very busy. So as a part of my third year in college, I have to go on placement. Um, that essentially entails me working a full-time job that's to do with my course. Um, so not only am I having to work a full-time job, but I also have to work part-time on weekends to keep some money in my pocket. So it's been literally impossible for me to get out any sort of content because I'm just so busy with everything else going on. Um, but lo and behold, one of the lovely parts about being on this full-time placement is that I get holidays. Nice long holidays. So, the boy, the man, the man has finally got out a new video for you. And this will likely be the last one for the next while, because again, I'm very, very fucking busy. Um, but yeah, all in all, little post-credit sequence just to let you know what's going on. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure you've all been dying, anticipating this upload. I, you could even say you've been um, hanging on by a thread. Because of the film. Boo! You stink! Anyway. Muchos gracias. Because as of late, the channel has absolutely exploded. I think in total, my videos have accumulated over 900,000 views. It's absolutely insane. So, if there's anybody here that should be getting a little pat on the back, it's you. I do all the hard work, but you, you little cutie pie, you make this all possible. So, I want to thank you all so much from the very bottom of my heart, because seeing all those comments people are putting out, and people are liking the video and sharing it around. You know, it really, it, it, it's, it's like there, there's something going on. There's something happening with this, this little channel of mine right now. And I'm very happy to see it. So, again, the way my work situation is, it's just, it's a challenge for me to get out videos, a consistent upload schedule. So, I hope that you've all enjoyed this video here. And I hope you'll continue to stick around for the future, because I'll try and keep up with it as best I can. But in conclusion, thank you all so much. You, you mean the fucking world to me. You mean the absolute world to me. And I'm glad that you're all sticking around and enjoying the content that I put out. So, take care. <laughs> JK, 